So Ron Canuel was asked to uh, kind of sum everything up and bring it all together and tell everyone what's happening and where we're going. Um, that's, that's the easy part. But uh, Ron Canuel also wants to share with you a bit too um, uh, about myself and in terms of uh, the rationale behind this meeting. Because what's interesting and what was interesting was the comments and the context that I received from people before the conference saying, why are you doing this? Well, as an educator for 34 years in the province of Quebec and now three years as a CEO for the Canadian Education Association, I've, I've had this wonderful opportunity to witness people in the world of education literally dedicating their lives, their resources, time that they could spend with their loved ones um, to be with children and to support children. And there's no doubt in my mind, and I say this openly and I advocate it very strongly, that anyone who, and everyone who works in the world of education has a passion for it and wants to make a difference for children. There's no doubt about that. But I, what I do come to and have seen is that this discussion that we've been having, as I said to my team when we were even formulating this in, in the fall, in the spring uh, this year, there's so much vision and we talk so much of the 21st century, we talk so much about doing different things. And I can, I, I've, I've been witness to this. And in this Eastern Township School Board where I was at, we, we did make some changes. But the biggest critics that we got about the changes came from the world of education. Because all of a sudden we were rocking the boat. And we changed our professional development models. And we changed the way in which we saw things. And we rocked the boat. And we were ignored by the government for quite some time because we rocked the boat. But in effect, the changes that happened there in that school board have been very profound. And I'm very, very proud of the work that the teachers did. And also something that happened to me two years ago was when I embarked on this wonderful research with Stephen Hurley called Teaching the Way You Aspire to Teach. I said this to Calvin Fraser and Miles Ellis at the CTF after that it was an epiphany for me. It brought me back to where I was a teacher. And did I forget what it was like to be a teacher? I'm saying this just for myself. The answer was yes. And being surrounded by teachers and seeing the passion that they were bringing to what they wanted to do and teaching the way they aspire to teach, that's when I started to realize we've got to think differently. We've got to let things happen. So in the last day, I have heard that conversation from you. We've got to do things differently, if only for the teachers and the students. And I say if only, but it's much more than that. The teaching the way you aspire to teach and what did you do in school today, of student voice and teacher voice being put together, in my estimation, is probably one of the most powerful things that is coming out of education not only in Canada, but elsewhere. Why? Because we are now reminding students and teachers that they are the core focus of what we do. And yes, I know, we talk a lot about it. And I can assure you, I've been in groups, and I've been at conventions, and I've been in study councils, and I've been with the Superior Council of Education in Quebec on the, on the high school commission, looking at these issues, and talking about it, and talking about it, and talking about it. But what I saw and what I see is what I know now, and that is we have to move forward. We have to empower our teachers, and we have to move. And I had a conversation with some people, and they really said it bang on. We, if we trust our teachers, we've got to put less constraints on them. And when I was walking around in the groups, listening to the conversations, I was very pleased to hear that being stated, we have to liberate the organization. We have to fragment the curriculum. We've got to trust people. Well, we have to trust people. That's what we have to do. I don't see any other way around it. We have to trust the teachers. We have to trust the students that when they ask and say, why are you doing this, that we tell them the real reasons. We heard also about equity in education, and I heard about this. Charles Fidel yesterday said something I'm not sure maybe caught on too well, but maybe you did hear it, when he said the middle class is shrinking. And the other thing that we've heard too is that the education system we have is a middle class system. Well, now we've got a real conundrum. We've got a shrinking middle class, and we now have a shrinking middle class system. 
So what's going to happen? And what the research is clear and unequivocal about is that equity and education are intrinsically tied together. So the better levels of equity we have in our society, the better we can move forward. We have to also look at it in the hearing with the comments and everything that was stated, that the statements that we, have, we make and our behaviors are not congruent. We're not speaking and not behaving the same way. We have to change that. We also heard from Steve Masson and the other researchers yesterday. There's too much of what we do that's based on myths, modeling, replication. Now, that's not bad in the sense that because that's all we knew and that's what we thought was right. And I get that. But here's the challenge. We now know it's not right. So what are we going to do about it? How do we adjust that? I also look and I was hearing about the professional development context of how do we go about training the teachers. I currently call the type of professional development that we see in our systems the scorched earth policy. We basically just screw, you know, just burn everything and start again. But we don't think about how we can best change those professional development approaches. When I hear teachers saying, I'm not against change, I'm against lousy PD, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. And when I talk to colleagues who are in the ministry or at the school district level and tell them, change your models, do it differently, well, it behooves you to do that. And it behooves all of us to think of that. The other elements that I heard very much in terms of the discussions had much to do with what I call organizational wisdom. Well, I don't call it it, but it's a research. It's a body of research. And we heard about the structures of education. There are many, many hardworking people in education now who are doing their best. But we have a huge blind spot for innovation and creativity. We don't see it. And yet, when we did the teaching the way you aspire to teach, again, I reiterate to you, it was amazing to see what these teachers had described as their best teaching moments that were experiential, that were inquiry-based, that did everything that you have articulated in the last day. How do we let that and open it up? How can we emancipate this? This is what needs to happen. This is certainly the message we have heard. So we're going to take this information that you have done, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've done. And I want you to know that I'm committing the CEA to having regional meetings, and we're going to carry on this conversation because it's way too important. You have set the first step, the most important step, and now we can move forward, and we're going to count on you to help us move this message forward of making it so that the teachers can do what they want to do and teach the way they aspire, and we listen to the voice of students guide us, finally. Because I had some great students who have told me things that right between the eye. And I even heard it this, this morning, some of the students who were talking saying how wonderful it was that they were actually at a conference where they were invited. And I think that's wonderful. So we will be taking this information, all of this. We will be putting it together. We will issue a report. And after that, we will then inform you of our plans to move to a local level and to have the same type of dialogue and conversation.